distance time and velocity time graphs. Something us physicists love is showing stuff on a graph, and velocity, acceleration and distance are no different. We have two types of graph we use here. We have a distance time graph and a velocity time graph. So let's look at a journey to work by car. The actual journey is going to be on the left of the screen and the distance time graph is on the right of the screen. So the car sets off and the distance traveled increases steadily with time. This is showing us that the car is moving a constant number of meters per second or at a constant velocity. Then he stops at the lights. Now time is still moving, but the distance is no longer increasing. This shows us that the car is stationary. Again, the car starts to move off, but this time they've realized they're going to be late for work. So they're doing even more meters every second. The velocity is greater. The line is steeper. So what can we see on this graph? Well, we can see straight away the steeper the line, the faster the car's moving, the more meters it's doing every second. In fact, the gradient of the line tells us the speed, the distance traveled in a certain amount of time. And we can calculate that. If we look at the speed of the car after it stopped at the lights, we can see the distance increases from 600 meters up to 1400 meters. And this tells us he's traveled 800 meters in that time. Well, what was the time? Well, it was 100 seconds when he started and 140 seconds when they finished. So it's taken 140 minus 100 or 40 seconds. So the average speed here is the distance divided by the time. So it's 800 divided by 40, which is equal to 20 meters a second. We can also see when the line is flat, that shows us the car is not moving. Okay, well, what about a similar journey for a velocity time graph? Well, this time he gets in his car, which is stationary, and the speed steadily increases up to 15 meters a second, and then continues at this speed until they get to the traffic lights, which they see slightly late. So instead of putting the foot on the brake, they slam it on the accelerator and up their speed to 20 meters a second, and then carry on at that speed until they get to work, where they steadily slow down to a stop. So what can we see from this graph? Well, a flat line here means velocity isn't changing. So the car's moving at a steady speed, a steady velocity. When the graph does increase, it means the velocity is increasing every second, or the car's accelerating. And again, we can calculate that. So let's look at it when the car's speed increased to get through the traffic lights. Well, before that happened, the initial velocity was 15 meters a second and increased it up to 20 meters a second. So that's a change in velocity of five meters per second. And the acceleration started at 100 seconds and stopped at 102 seconds. So it took two seconds. Acceleration is change in velocity divided by time. So we've got five divided by two, which is 2.5 meters per second squared. Another thing we can find from this particular graph is the distance traveled, which is given by the area under the graph, the speed multiplied by the time. So for the first section where the car is accelerating, we have a triangle. So we'd need to use half base times height to find the distance. So the height's 15, the base is five. So we'd do a half of five times 15, which gives us 37 and a half meters traveled. If we wanted to work it out for the entire graph, and often with these graphs, they're in multiple parts, you need to split the graph, the area under the graph up into rectangles and triangles, work out the area of each, and then add them all together. Make sure you fully understand these graphs and practice them a lot as they come up a lot in the forces top.